Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about mixing and I'm going to show you how to put a rudder aileron mix together on the RadioMaster TX16S. This is the first video after that Hobby King MX2 flight, and boy, I had a lot of fun with that plane. If you haven't checked that one out, you want to make sure you do. And I'll get the uh, motor upgrades and the ESC taken care of and the, and the new batteries in, and when I do, I'll, I'll definitely get some more footage of that plane. But I had a lot of fun flying that little plane. That thing's going to be a hoot. Enough about that. Let's jump into the reason you're here. Let's talk about mixing. I personally am not a big fan of mixing. And the reason for that is because I always just have this idea that fly the plane. That said, there are cases where it made a lot of sense to me. And one of those cases where mixing made some sense to me was when I used to fly long range FPV with a Bixler. The Bixler required rudder to turn. And because I wasn't doing anything aerobatic at all, mixing in a little bit of rudder and aileron never hurt my feelings. I also know, and I've never flown one oddly enough, but I also know that the airplanes like the Cub, they tend to benefit from a little bit of mixing. I'm not going to pass judgment on mixing. I'm just going to show you how to do it. If you're one of those types that doesn't believe in doing mixing on your radio, then don't. You know, I personally, I don't, I don't like it. I don't, I don't use it. I don't like it. But um, I, I do understand that there could be use cases for it. So that's why I'm going to show you how to do it because I get asked the question quite a bit. The point of today's video is to show you how to put a rudder aileron mix together. And I'm going to take it one step further and show you how to put that mix on a slider so that you can adjust the mix while you're flying. In order to make that happen, there are five things that we need to do. Number one, we're gonna define a curve. We, we like curves, right? If you've been following this series, you know we do curves. So we're gonna define a curve. We're gonna create an input and apply the curve to that input. Then we're gonna add a special function so we can adjust our global variable. And then we're gonna add a mix to the mixer. And the thing about the mix is that the input that requires the mix is added to the input that provides the mix. And I will show you what that looks like when we get to that point in the, in the video. But I really wanted to say that out loud because it gets a little confusing and I still do it. I, every half the time I do a mix, I, put, I reverse them. I put, I put the wrong thing in the wrong spot. What I want to reinforce is that the input that requires the mix, in this case, it's aileron. When I use my ailerons to turn, that's the input that requires the mix that aileron is added to the input providing the mix, which is the rudder. All right, so that's, that's a key point for later, and you'll see that when we get into the mixer. And then the last thing is we're going to use the global variable as the mix weight, and I'll show you how to do that as well. So with that, let's just jump into it. Step number one, we need to define a two-point curve. So we're going to go into the model, and we're going to toggle over to the curve section, and we're going to add a two-point curve. And I'm going to call my curve mix. Actually, I'm going to call it R-A-M, rudder aileron mix. That's what we'll call it. Rudder aileron mix. I don't know why they don't give us more spaces for these mix names. You only get three letters. That's it. Okay, and I'm going to leave it standard at two points. And remember, because we only want the mix value to be zero, to 100, that's why we're doing the curve, we need to change the base of the curve to zero. So I'm going to bring that up to zero. There we go. So now I have a two-point curve, zero to 100. For those of you who have watched these videos before, you understand that the reason we use two points is because you can let the computer do all the averaging. If you add three or four points and you want to change the upper and lower boundary of your mix, then any other point you have along the way, you have to average that manually. But by leaving it at two points, the computer in the radio keeps that line linear. You don't have to make any other adjustments. You just change your high and low points and that's it. Okay, so we've got our curve done. Now we're on to step two. Step number two is to create an input and apply the curve. So let's back out of this and we'll go back to the input screen and we're going to create an input to apply the curve. So just pick an open spot and we're going to call this input name, same thing, we'll call it RAM. This is our rudder aileron mix. OK, 
okay? And for our source, I'm going to use the right slider. So I'm going to set this to right slider. And remember, I gave the tip earlier that once you highlight a field and get it to blink like this one is, then all you have to do is touch the, the control that you want to be the one in charge, and the computer will automatically select that. You don't have to go spinning the wheel through here. So you don't have to do all that. You see how I've got all these different options in here? If I just hit the slider with this highlighting, the source changes to that slider automatically. Real nice function. This is one of the things about OpenTX that I just love because the programmers are very thoughtful about this kind of thing. They try and make it a lot faster to navigate the radio. So it's a very, very thoughtful touch. By the way, my example uses a slider. You could also set it to a pod if you want. See how I've got S2 there. You can make it S1 if you wanted. I, I want to use R. I want to use my slider on the right. But you can use any of those potentiometer style switches that you want. Okay, so right slider for me. And now we have to go down and apply the curve. Remember the curve name is RAM. Okay, so now you can see that we have the right slider creating an input that goes from 0 to 100. The next thing we have to do is create a special function that applies the output from our slider to the global variable we want to use. So let's toggle over to special functions. And we'll pick an open slot. Any one will do. I'm going to pick SF3. And we're going to set this to be on because we want this to be in effect every time the radio is turned on. Where are you? There it is. On. We're going to adjust. I'm going to set this to adjust. You can pick any global variable you want. I'm using GV1, but you can pick whichever one makes you happy. And then here's the tricky part because when you look at this, you don't. it's a number. You can hard code a global variable if you want, but that's not what we're after here. We want our global variable to be adjustment adjusted based on the input we created. So long press here under mixer source. We're going to look for our input that we created called RAM. Remember that? RAM. So that's our input and now we're going to turn it on and we can verify that our global function now works the way we expect it to work by toggling over to the global variables page. Now you can see when I move that slider from top to bottom, we have a range on GV1 that goes from 0 all the way down to 100 all the way up. So if you want your, now here's the cool thing. If you say you want the mix to, all, to never be 100, right? Say 100 is way too high. In fact, it probably is. So let's go back and change that. Let's, let's acknowledge that 100, you don't want 100% rudder uh, at 100% aileron. Let's, let's say that's a bad idea. So let's go in and adjust it. That's probably a very true statement. So let's take the RAM curve and we'll drop the, the peak down to say just, let's just call it, call it 50. What this means is the mix will never set your rudder aileron mix to anything higher than 50 on the weight, okay? And that's probably likely. So now you can see it at, a, at full deflection, at full up, 50 is the highest value for GV1, and 0 is the lowest. So if you want no mix at all, you can bring the slider all the way down. If you want the mix to go as high as 50, you push it up to the top. Okay, so we've completed step 3. Now step number 4 is to add the mix. So let's go do that. This is the tricky part. So you've got to get this on the right interface. And in our case, remember what I said in the opening. The input requiring the mix, in our case, it's the aileron. It's the aileron is the input that we're trying to, that requires the adjustment from the rudder, is added to the input providing the mix. So in our case, we want the rudder to get the mix from the aileron. So I'm going to click on channel 4. I'm going to long press, and I'm going to hit insert after. And under the mix name, I'm going to call it RAM. And under source, it's our aileron. And under weight, we're going to go ahead and use GV1, which is the variable that we've set up that's governed by our curve on our slider. And that's it. All right, now you can take a look and see when I move the aileron, look at the output on the rudder right here. That's the mix. So here's the movement of the aileron, and you can see that rudder moving negative 45. Now, 
I'm going to go ahead and bring my slider down to zero. And that means that rudder shouldn't move at all. See that? No movement. I'm going to put the slider back up to 100 and you can see movement on the rudder. There's another way we can look and see what's going on here and that's by going back out to the main screen, long pressing the jog dial and going down to monitors. And when we see monitors, I'll move the aileron stick again and you can see the rudder movement. You see that? See the rudder moving with the aileron? Now here's the important thing. When I move the rudder, that doesn't move the ailerons. So the rudder moves independently. There's no aileron changes when I move the rudder by itself. But when I move the aileron, you can see that the rudder moves with it. That's the mix. Now I'm going to bring that mix down to zero and you should see that rudder movement. See I've got full deflection on the ailerons. Now watch when I bring it down to zero. See how the rudder is decreasing, decreasing, decreasing down to zero. So now there's no movement. All right, now you might be asking yourself, what if your rudder is going the wrong direction? So what if I make a right turn with my aileron and my rudder goes left? That's bad, right? That's going to put you in a bad state. So in order to flip that, so look, in this case, I've got, when I do right aileron, this rudder output goes to the left, okay? The, the red goes left. I'm doing a right turn, the red goes left. That might be backwards for your plane. So let's look at how we fix that. We'll exit out of this, go back into the model, go into the mix, and under GV1, we want to use the in, inver, inversion of GV1. So it'll be the negative value of GV1. So click on GV1 and go the other direction. Now it's negative GV1. And we'll go back now and we'll go back to our monitor. And notice when I make the right hand turn, the rudder goes, the output of the rudder goes to the right. Okay, so that's reversed. So that's how you flip it if your mix isn't going the correct direction. You want to make sure if you make that right hand turn with your aileron that your rudder comes to the right as well. So you want that coordinated turn. Right hand turn, right wing goes down, rudder comes right. And that's a coordinated turn. Well, there you go, guys. That is how you set up a rudder to aileron mix on the RadioMaster TX16S. I hope this content's been valuable. If you liked it, please hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit up my Amazon affiliate links if you need some consumable RC gear, and don't forget to check out the t-shirt store. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. All right, with that out of the way, there are five... Okay, with that out of the way, there are five things we need to accomplish when... Okay. <laughs> Point of this video is to show you how to put a rudder aileron mix together. And in order to do that... The point of this video is to put a rudder aileron mix together. And in order to do that, we need to do five things. Number one, we're going to create a curve. Beep. All right, the point... Beep. Beep, beep, beep.